first display that went up at the beginning of the new year. And it just so happened to be the year of the dog. So how appropriate. So the tree indicates the time of the year, and the companion piece indicates what's, what's special about that particular display. Here's another Japanese tokonoma display. And it's a magnificent tosho, needle juniper, on the left. What's on the right? <laughs> a piece of shoe leather. Roadkill. Okay. I'm just curious. Does anybody really like this display? Not really. No. Even though, in, in the, I think my point is, it's even in Japan. Sometimes we the, things are done that are not that great. You got this massive, gorgeous tree, and then you've got this mountain stone. Oops, they forgot the G-bond below it, so it really is not. Uh, it's, it's really kind of disappearing. The other thing is, it's a distant mountain. So you have this massive tree that's next to a distant mountain. Well, that massive tree must be, you know, that must be um, five miles tall. Um, so mountain stones are not very often used as companion pieces to bonsai because it, it, they don't really relate. Also, if you look at it, you know, half of this picture is full, and the other half is just this empty backdrop. So, less than pleasing. Your tokonoma display elements, typically bonsai, and in a tokonoma, a formal um, um, display, you'll have the scroll, and then your accent or your companion piece. And I've got the heights vary, because what, they're, what they think of is that the companion piece or accent on that flat G-bond, that's earth. The bonsai that's elevated some is man, and that the scroll, which is the highest, is heaven. So that's how that, those pieces relate. And here's a classic uh, display. Uh, that's a uh, um, persimmon uh, tree on the left with a fruit. So that tells you it's fall. So you don't need the companion piece to tell you, or even the, the scroll, because you've, you've had one piece indicates the season. And, and, um, and then off to the right, you have a little hut stone. And then you have a scene, a mountain scene, and the, and the uh, scroll. It just kind of tells you, you know, the water's coming down off the mountain, and probably a little river goes between the tree and the, the house. But just beautiful balance, pretty. So this is the Cheryl Manning um, uh, approach to display. It's the 3D approach to showtime. So the three things I'm going to cover right now are detail, diversity, and direction. Now brace yourselves, this is actually one of my show trees. Not a pretty sight, but the point I'm going to make is on deciduous fruiting and flowering trees, you're supposed to remove the wire. It's, you put wire on for training just where you need it. That's not a thing that stays. Um, but you look at this close-up shot and you say, well, that's just wrong over the tree. And it doesn't get any prettier when you see the, the tree there. And it actually happens to be one of my favorite little trees. Right here, it looks like a band there. There's actually an old wire cut below and above. Right here, this is a flowering pear. Right here is the graft. This is flowering pear, and this is rootstock. Here is... Um, individual roots that go straight down before they go out. Uh, yikes, yuck. Um, the best part of this uh, is the pot which more than one person has said, gorgeous pot, uh, way too nice for that little tree. Um, it's a beautiful, I think it's a Criticus, I think it's Michael Hagedorn's work. What I want to point out is that pale, uh, green glaze with this fall leaf color 
is just really beautiful, at least for me. Now, all I see here are all the flaws, and there's no way for me to really hide it. But I really treasure this tree because it used to be John Naka's. He developed the tree, and he gave it to me. So it's very precious to me, and the one and only time I show it is when it's in winter flower, where I'm hoping that all the beautiful flowers will distract you from all of the numerous flaws. There are times that you put wire on a tree, and it's really your conifers. So there's basically it's spruce, and I don't do the spruce down here, but basically it's the, the junipers and the, um, the pines. This is one branch. This is the most incredible, the most <laughs> I've never seen so many little candles on one branch before. But to get the cloud-like layering into your pines and junipers, this is what this is what needs to be done. Now, a mistake that's made here in the U.S. a lot is that people put on the wire and then they put their trees in the show, and you actually see the wire, and you shouldn't, because you wire the tree two years before you show it. What I want to show you though is the wiring for show. There's wire for training and we don't, you know, just get the job done. But wiring for show, you've got a lot of uh, candles there. You want to use the fewest number of wires to fix the largest number of branches. So I'm going to walk you through it. I have four branches, four secondary branches. And I'm using two wires, and I got the job done, so there's very little. So it's a bird's eye view. Here it is, we're looking down, we're, we're up in the sky, and this is the round trunk. This is your primary branch coming here. These are your secondary branches. And if we've branched off, then those would be tertiary branches. We're not going to go there. We're just going to do this. So this is how you wire for show. You always want to start on the main part, whether it's a trunk or it's a primary branch, or if you're doing tertiary branches, you know, you start with a secondary and then you go to the tertiary. But here we go. We have two wires. We have one. We start at the base of the secondary. We go over and under, and over and under, and over and under, and over and under, and, under and out. Once we know, once we've got this part, because these guys are kind of delicate, once we've got it anchored here, we come back now and we go under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. So you got your first wire in place. Now we got our second. We've got two more branches to do. And we start, here's your starting point number two. This is part of the prep. So you want to marry, you want it to be just like tr um, train tracks, right up against, right next to it, parallel to the first, over, under over, under, and here you split off to this side. And then you come back, once this is nice and fixed, then you come back under, over, under, over. And that's how you end up with a beautiful um, wire job. You don't want to cross wires, you don't want to have too many wires. Again, fewer is better, but you got to get the job done. When you're wiring pines, the, ter the terminal point where that candle is, you're going to sweep it under the candle and then over and it. It, it looks like a teardrop. And, and so the red dots are below the branch for the candle and the blue is above. And that way you've got complete uh, 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 control over the position of the candle, where that candle is going to go. On junipers, because they, the, the foliage will splay out, kind of like a hand or something, you just kind of have, it's like a, a little shelf of uh, just one line um, skirting at the base of the foliage. It may be hard to see here, but I wanted to point out wiring for training. Now, this is one of John Naka's uh, pine trees. 
And the training job was done by my other teacher, Mitsuya, at a workshop a couple of years ago, and um, four years ago. And there are actually four um, pieces of number six wire, copper wire, which is huge, and going around the trunk, and then he's pulled it back and up, and it's just he's a major uh, movement. And you don't care how ugly it is. You don't want it to cross and strangle the tree, but you don't care about pretty. And this is the one and only time you're going to cross the trunk. That branch I showed you before, this is the tree. This was that branch I photographed before. And what they're able to do, and you can see the levels, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's like six, seven layers here that creates this cloud-like thing. Um, but the thing about this is that what's most important is this whole trunk there's no wire here and no wire here. At the very top, there's wire going from one small branch to another, but that's going to be okay because after two years, you're not going to see any of that wire. It's all going to be um, behind the foliage.